widespread use of electronic gadgets and the rapid advances in electric vehicles are leading to new requirements in various industries for the electrical resistance of the raw materials used. The growing market demand for conductive materials means that producers are having to set more stringent requirements for accurate assessment of resistivity. The electrical behavior of materials used in particular applications is important for a variety of reasons, such as safety, static charge buildup, current transmission, etc. Depending on the application, a material could require a specific value of either volume or surface resistivity. The relevant type of resistivity to be measured depends on the way in which a conductive agent has been introduced into the material. Materials that have been chemically treated or coated with a conductive agent are able to distribute charge around the surface only. Materials in which a conductive filler has been distributed evenly are able to conduct electricity throughout their volume. In most cases, a material that is volume conductive is also surface conductive. The end use may require a material to have a specified level of resistivity, for example for EMI shielding or for ESD and anti-static properties. A great number of products, for instance car tyres and industrial rollers, have requirements for a specific level of resistivity for the whole system because it is important not only to remove static electricity from the surface when it occurs at high speed but also to prevent its accumulation in the long run. There is also a wide range of applications that requires any charge to be dissipated throughout the surface, such as protective wear, coating for pipes, floorings and packaging films. We are going to define the key statements of resistivity measurements related to applications, how, according to which requirements and standards, the materials properties should be measured to comply with the real needs of the relevant industry. We have several samples of conductive silicons. In sample 1 and sample 3, tubal graphene nanotubes were used as conductive additives and introduced through concentrate tubal matrix 605. In sample 2, standard commercial conductive HCR based on carbon black was used. In addition to tubal, a pigment was also added to sample 3. All samples have the same level of specific electrical resistivity. We will measure these samples using different methods and standards to see how the measurement technique, the quality of the sample and the accuracy of the device can affect the results. The four-probe method is considered to be the most accurate measurement method and conforms to the ISO 1853 and ASTM D991 standards. We will be using the latter one. The measurement uses two pairs of identical current electrodes, with one pair attached under the sample and the other pair attached above the sample directly above the first pair. A pair of potentiometric electrodes is secured in such a way that all the electrodes are in a straight line and their upper surfaces are in the same horizontal plane. The measurement takes into account the distance between the electrodes and the dimensions of the sample. It is not affected by the contact resistance that occurs between the attached electrodes and the sample. The four-probe method allows us to determine the actual resistance of the material, which can then be converted into the volume or surface resistivity using the formula. Another method for measuring, which is also widely used in the industry, is the two-probe method. It is capable of measuring a wide range of resistivity, from insulating to ESD. As the name of the method suggests, it employs two electrodes, the configuration of which depends on the type of sample. The typical type of electrode, the circular electrode, is a round electrode inside a ring, as indicated in the standard. This electrode configuration confines the measurement of surface resistance to the area between the circular and ring electrodes. The difference in the results obtained when using the two-probe measurement method is due to the significant contribution of contact resistance arising between the electrodes and the sample. The difference in the measurements can be up to five orders of magnitude. When using the two-probe method, there are several methods to reduce contact resistance. The use of heavy electrodes of more than one kilogram each and of conductive elastomer on the surface of the standard electrodes can minimize this effect. 
Special electrodes that are used in the standard measurement techniques also allow this to be reduced. However, none of these methods will eliminate it completely. It is simply impossible. To measure surface resistivity, faster alternative methods with so-called simple devices are often used. Let's look at how this works. We should thus bear in mind that the value of surface resistivity obtained using a simple meter can differ from the value obtained using a standard method by several orders of magnitude. This difference in values can be attributed to a number of significant variables, diverse electrode materials, different areas of contact with the sample, and varying accuracy of the devices. The essence of surface resistance measurement is described well in the ASTM D257 standard, which says, surface resistance or conductance cannot be measured accurately, only approximated, because some degree of volume resistance or conductance is always involved in the measurement. The measured value is also affected by the surface contamination. Surface contamination and its rate of accumulation is affected by many factors, including electrostatic charging and interfacial tension. These in turn, may affect the surface resistivity. Surface resistivity, or conductivity, can be considered to be related to material properties when contamination is involved, but is not a material property of electrical insulation material in the usual sense. What else has a significant effect on the measurement of resistance? Let's go back to what was mentioned at the start of this video, the end use of the final product. Some products require special treatment to improve adhesion to the working surface. This includes, for example, printing and industrial rollers, which are treated with abrasive stone to increase the grip. Thus, different products will vary in surface quality. Can a material's uneven surface affect the measurement of resistance? As we've learned, with the two-probe measurement technique, the contact area between the electrode and the sample plays an important role and directly affects the obtained resistance values. Because tight contact between the electrode and the sample cannot be achieved when there is an uneven surface, the surface resistivity values measured by the device are greater by several orders of magnitude. Interestingly, when measuring volume resistivity using the more accurate four-probe method, without the contribution of contact resistance, the measured values are not affected by an uneven surface. One way to solve this problem is to use heavy ANSI or ASTM electrodes, which ensure increased contact area with the sample. In most cases, the application of additional pressure will cause the measured resistance reading to decrease. This is a result of both lower contact resistance and greater electrode surface contact area, greater number of parallel resistance paths. The ASTM D257 and ISO 14309 standards also allow the use of conductive paste with uneven surfaces, which reduces the effects of the material surface imperfections. Now let's examine the important question. Do different types of conductive additives affect the measurement results in any way? It is the uniformity of distribution of a conductive additive that determines the stability of the measured resistivity in a sample. It would seem that the use of significant amounts of additives, say 10% or more, as is the case with commonly used materials on the market, would make the problem of non-uniform distribution less relevant. However, carbon black-based compounds also have non-uniform resistance, not only due to the quality of distribution, but also due to the varying surface quality of the same sample. When using carbon black, due to its high concentration and because of the spherical shape of the particles, a phenomenon known in the industry as carbon release takes place when the conductive additive is present on the surface of the sample. As a result, attempts to measure the resistance of the material instead end up mostly measuring the parameters of the conductive additive on the surface. And the biggest errors are made when different types of conductive agents are applied. In contrast, graphene nanotubes, owing to their greater length to diameter ratio, are not released to the surface. This means that when measuring resistance, we are measuring the actual resistance of the material and not that of the conductive additive. 
Thus, the express methods most commonly used during the production process, such as operational quality control, based on the principle of conductive, not conductive, actually measure the electrical conductivity of a conductive additive on the surface and not the resistance of the material. This confirms that non-standard methods, which are common and widely used in express control, are not appropriate for new materials. Materials provide their characteristics to the end product, but there are also many effects on the measuring of these characteristics. This is why industry associations create specific types and processes of measurements that take into account the real applications and uses of the final products. To create the material with functionality which is compliant to industrial applications, the following factors should be considered for electrical conductivity measurements. First, is the right standard which is in the line with actual requirements to material? Is clearness and accuracy of measurements used for quality control to guarantee the performance? And third, and the most important, is that method of measurements must be compliant with actual application. With the introduction of new materials with fundamentally new properties, it is necessary to take into account their specific features to modernize the no longer relevant standards of production quality control, replacing them with advanced and more accurate techniques and materials which enhance the quality of products, as well as ensure the safety of materials for end users.